Hey guys, my name is Devin Grote, I'm the lead guitarist of Pillars of Autumn, and you're watching Zandriel Grimm. What can be better than one review? Two of them. Ha 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 ha! Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andre Grimm, and welcome to my in-depth album review of Sodomizer and the Masquerade from Pillars of Autumn. So this one's going to be a bit interesting of a video, because I'm not just reviewing one album, I'm going to be reviewing Two. It's gonna be my very first double review, uh, and thankfully this one's this one's just an EP. This one's an actual album, so it should be relatively well kept. Anyway, I'm going to be reviewing both Sodomizer and The Masquerade from a band called Pillars of Autumn. Permission granted by Devin the guitarist. Shout out to that boy. Currently signed to Chug Core Records, which I am finding a lot of awesome death metal and slam bands are, uh, I immediately took interest in the Toronto, Ontario, Canada based band, because first of all, uh, they were selling both of their CDs for a reasonable price, but also because they're labeled as Technical Deathcore. Uh, the problem that I have with Technical Deathcore is that usually people do gent and then they say, oh, I'm so technical, bro, ah! which I highly disagree with. But from what I've seen so far, both in the tracks that I've listened to so far up before this video, and the videos that I've watched, they don't sound like they're just being gent and passing it off as technicality, so that's fine by me. So I'm excited to go ahead and get into this because, you know, I've been talking with Pose of Autumn for a while, and they seem like really cool people, so let's go ahead and get right into the track listing, which is what you all came to see. We're going to start off with Sodomizer. So I'll give this EP a little bit of leeway because Devin did inform me that this entire EP was a solo project. Just saying. So The Prey is a short little two minute instrumental for the, for the beginning of this album. And for the first half, it's build up and build up and build up and the same guitar note over and over besides the occasional squeal. Thankfully the drums and piano make it tolerable, but overall it's fairly boring. Thankfully, it's just the intro, so I'm gonna give this a flat C and move straight on. Sodomizer is a story following a madman's pursuit for misguided love while he struggles with his own insanity. So the Sodomizer starts out with an electronic take for an intro, and has a very gent feel throughout the entire thing. It does have moments of technicality, but it's honestly mostly just gent and breakdown. This song is about the man convincing himself that he is the best thing that this bitch has ever ha happened to, had happened to her, as he's bashing the gash, as one might say. Nothing super impressive, although it is fairly good for what it is. So I'll give this one a B minus. See, what gets me is that the vocalist follows similar patterns with his lines throughout basically the entirety of the CP. When he goes low, it follows a very drawn out, lengthy, and then he goes high and does shorter lyrics to accommodate. But therein, the problem is that the song becomes very predictable. The instrumental sounds fantastic, but then the simplism of the vocals brings it down slightly. But this is definitely one of the better songs on the album so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this song an A-. This song features Jacob Coolridge of Beguiler, but forgive me if that name doesn't ring a bell. And by the way, I just want to go ahead and say that not every song needs a minute long intro. Now this song actually pulled out a few new stops, uh, like taking the music out and then roaring back in. Now if anyone's been following my channel for any length of time, then you'll know that that's one of my favorite things in the world, when the music stops and then just punches you in the face when it comes back. It's always entertaining, it's always so much fun to hear. In fact, the instrumental for this track is probably the best one that I've heard so far. Uh, however, again, the vocals just... what? 
destroy it. Around the two minute 40 mark, the way that he's saying certain stuff, it just doesn't fit the song at all. It really takes, it really takes me out of it. Now, that breakdown at the end though was sick as Vocals, guitar, drums, pretty much everything that was going on was pretty solid as hell. Uh, especially the line, I am the murderer of crows at the three minute mark. So this was actually a lot better, but still a lot of wiggle room and it could have been a lot you know, smoother, but again, this is their debut EP, it was a solo project, it's fine. I'll give this one another A-. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why couldn't they make the instrumentals like this one? Now this is technical deathcore. However, as awesome as it was, I cannot ignore that they were joined by Dmitry Demyenko from Chakron. So I would not be surprised if the reason why this one jumped in quality is because of his help. No questions asked, it's a very technical instrumental with a heavy AF breakdown. Easily getting an A+, but I don't know how I feel about the fact that the best song on this entire EP was the outro instrumental. Hmm. So for a debut EP, the Sodomizer by Pillars of Autumn actually did fairly well, especially considering the fact that Devin did all of the instrumentals and then Nick came, on, came along later and added in his vocals. So Sodomizer is going to get an 8.3 out of 10, being a B+. So they released Sodomizer, and then four years later they released their debut album, The Masquerade in 2019. The Sodomizer was 2015, The Masquerade was 2019, all that kind of stuff. And actually, fun fact, I talked with Devin about this, and apparently there was supposed to be an album before The Masquerade, but it just got deleted out of nowhere! <laughs> oh boy, technology is amazing, isn't it? So enough talk about the masquerade, let's get straight into it. Holy- This was one and a half minutes of pure, unadulterated technicality. Significantly better than the tracks on Sodomizer, might I add. I'll give this an A, a flat, no, a flat A. Well, the biggest reason I give it that is because it was so short. Remember when I said the vocalist was getting predictable? Scratch that. He even does new vocal techniques on this song, and it all just kind of flows together really, really well. The entirety of the song, that is. The beginning really flows well, and then when it gets to about a minute 40, it leads to an epic breakdown that is just so fulfilling. I'm glad that they reworked this album when they did, because it all just feels amazing. No doubt about it, I'm going to give The Masquerade Part 1 Arrival an A+. Even the solo at the 52nd mark of this song shows that technicality can go a long way. As this track unfolds, the girl falls for the masquerade, and the audience can see how it's actually taking her individuality away, and they're just brainwashing the poor soul. The second solo in it was very similar to the first one, so it felt like it could have, you know, just been merged together, but, but it's whatever, because they both sound really good. But other than that, I'd say the entirety of the song sounded great. Flat A. The girl finds out that the masquerade is an evil being, so she knows she'll have to take them down from the inside out. The lyrics in here are probably unintentionally inspirational, as they talk about breaking free from the system that is imprisoning individuality, and freeing thought, and being yourself. 
The solos in this one are decent, but where this song really shines is honestly the breakdown at the very, very end. I will admit, they ventured close into false stop territory, but they came back from it. Which, just so you guys know, when I say false stop, I mean like when a song sounds like it ends, and then it, and then it goes back to continuing where it was. This is completely different from when the sound drowns out and then you get punched in the face again. With that, as degradation, as well as the final part of the Masquerade trilogy, is going to get an easy A+. As we transition to the grandeur and virtue part of the album, Interlude comes forward as the heaviest two-minute instrumental, as well as bringing in some odd instruments. Not saying they're bad, just that they're there. The technicality of this, especially with the drums, really shine through the entire thing, and the almost never-ending sweep section of the guitar gets right in. Although, I will admit that the choir that they made into the actual track had such unrealistically high moments that it just kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. Or this. I'm not going to take any points away from that one, because overall the track itself was still amazing, but it's, you know, it's still pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and give Interlude an A+, which I never thought I was going to give an Interlude, Prelude, or Postlude, which I didn't know that was a word until I saw the tracks on this album. I never thought, like, transitional tracks like that were going to get such high grades, but hey, Colors of Autumn is kicking ass. Oh, mighty souls of the swine, bless my man Nicholas Young with the power of the free! And I guess the gods heard me, cause shit! I will say that Nick pronounced some of the words in this song kind of weird. Like, it, it just had odd placement in it. Uh, specifically, the devour everything, nothing left to admire line. Like, it was fine, it just felt weird. Overall, not gonna lie, I kind of had a hard time figuring out what this song contributed to the story, but hey, it was fucking lit. Nothing really to say about this one, it's just as good as the other tracks. Uh, although I will admit a little bit less memorable, but still fantastic, so I would still recommend you go listen to it. I'll give Dance of Swine an A-. <laughs> Let's see. If I was to compare the level of this song to something, I would say, Immortal by Lorna Shore. As the Masquerade tries to keep the girl they've worked so hard to obtain, the girl fights all temptations. This song is easily one of the best ones that I've heard so far. In fact, I would actually venture and say that this one is one of the best deathcore songs that I've heard in a while. Genuinely. Like, there's this one, but then like above it is like some of the songs from Immortal by Lorna Shore. Damn it, CJ! A plus. Those strings in the beginning of the track are just beautiful. And when the heavy kicks in, it, it, it just all fits so perfectly. They do it so magnificently. If you couldn't tell from the O face I'm doing right now. As the girl finally finds freedom, she and the force that's guided her plan on making the world back up to how it was before, the masquerade took everything. And then, PLOT TWIST! Or something, I don't know. Even though this song was five minutes long, it went by really, really quickly. This is honestly one of the few times I think they should have extended the song further. But I won't bag on them for doing that, for letting a song come to a natural end. It was fine. It was a great song. And you know what? New Skin gets an A+. The 
the final instrumental, and the longest one yet, at a whopping four minutes exactly, it is an excellent, and dare I say, perfect way to end this album. Showcasing the band's incredible heavy and in-your-face tone that they showcased throughout the entirety of the album, this did an awesome job. Especially that breakdown right at the end with the four China hits of doom. Postlude, which again, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know was a word until today, gets an eight. Interesting, interesting indeed. Sodomizer was a pretty good uh, demo level EP, but then The Masquerade blew Sodomizer out of the water, and it was amazing. It sounded great. Sodomizer once again got a B plus with an 8.3 out of 10, but then The Masquerade, on the other hand, got an A plus and 9.8 out of 10. So, with that in mind, I want to thank Pillars of Autumn for giving me permission to review both of their albums, as well as providing the intro for this video. Make sure you check out Shokor Records for the CDs, as well as many other brutal AF bands! I look forward to more Pillars of Autumn in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, my name is Andre Grimm. Make sure you subscribe for future heavy metal, in-depth album reviews and news in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.